Welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. In this series, I cover the topics related to developer tools. These tools help developers get the job done with a higher quality and convenience. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS, and that's fine. Just copy the contents of that to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all my source code in a directory called SRC. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL. Finally, hit enter. And now to the show. In this episode, we're going to cover linting. If you've never heard of linting, it's a class of tools that can help you with code quality and code standards. Linting is a funny name. It actually comes from the name of the undesirable bits of fiber and fluff found in sheep's wool. Thank you, Wikipedia. Let's cover some of the reasons to use a linter. When you write code alone, you might be more carefree about how your code is formatted like how many spaces you might use for indents in Python. Maybe two, maybe four. When you're part of a team, you'll want to create a code base that looks cohesive, almost like it was written only by one person. Also, if you're thinking about open sourcing the code, a linter can help you create code that follows the customs of that language, or making it more idiomatic. Like in Python, the community expects four spaces to represent tabs. Or another example is that you should have a comment that helps you document functions in Python. Probably all languages, really. Linters pick up all that stuff and remind you to write clearer code. And all of this happens before you commit your code to source control. Linters look for hundreds of standards that exist for any given language. Uh, later on, we'll be looking at PyLint, which is a linter for the Python language. In Python, standards are set using PEPs, or Python Enhancement Proposals. These are the specifications that are used to standardize the Python language. And PyLint implements the standards that are described in PEP 8. PyLint checks for 188 cases at the moment. In addition to programming languages, linters can also validate structured data formats like YAML and JSON. Later on, we're going to look at linting JSON with a JSON linter. The most common place you can use linters is in your editor. It's common to use them in your continuous integration environment as well. We'll just look at linters in your editor in this episode. Okay, open up Atom if you don't already have it open. And we're going to install PyLint and the PyLint plugin. The Atom PyLint plugin requires the PyLint program to be installed on your computer before it will work. To install PyLint, open your terminal. Because we already have Python and pip installed, you can just type pip install PyLint. Wait for it to finish installing. Now that PyLint is installed, we can install the Atom PyLint plugin. In Atom, you can install plugins or extensions using system preferences. So go ahead and click on the Atom menu, pick preferences, and this opens a new tab with lots of options, but we're only interested in the install option. Click on the install option, and this will put you in the place to search for the PyLint plugin. Click on the Search Packages input box and type PyLint followed by Enter. Pick Linter-PyLint and click the blue Install button. Uh, wait, wait a minute for it to complete. And since we're here and we're going to be looking at JSON linting later, uh, let's install the package Linter-JSON-Lint. Use the same procedure as above. Search for the package, then click the Install button and wait a few seconds. Now that we're set up, 
we'll look at a couple of files in the example project. Open the linter directory and take a peek in the Python subdirectory. You want to open example1.py. You should see that red dot next to line 10. Uh, if you hover over that dot or the squiggly line, a message will pop up. E001 unexpected indent. Okay, so what does that mean? To figure it out, you have to turn on invisibles. You can enable that in settings, editor, and scroll down and click show invisibles. With invisibles enabled, you'll notice that the character before that line is showing a double caret mark. Uh, so this is different than the indent above. Uh, it's using spaces. So this is what PyLint is complaining about. In Python, you can't mix tabs and spaces. Change the tab to a spaces tab by deleting the tab indent and hitting the tab key again. Save the file. Great. We fixed that issue, but now you can see there are more that have popped up. If you click on each underlined area, you can see the different errors or warnings that PyLint has identified. On line 4, this warning is telling us that the line is longer than it should be, 104 characters versus 100. On lines 9 and 10, these are errors talking about parentheses that aren't needed in Python 2.7. On line 13, the error is telling us that the function name is already identified on line 7. The last warnings are the same as the second and third warnings about parentheses. Okay, just to see what it might look like if someone else wrote a module for your app and didn't follow the Python style guidelines, open bot.py. Wow, that's a lot of warnings. We can see some familiar ones from before, but some new ones like on 13. Okay, let's move on to linting a JSON file. Back in the example project, under linting JSON, open the example.json file. If you recall, we already installed the JSON linter and that's why you're seeing the red highlights over certain areas of the file. As I hover over the first part of the word on line 3, a dialog pops up and tells me there's an unknown character V and that it's expecting a comma or closing bracket. JSON requires a key value pair to be separated by a comma. On line 2, add the comma after developer and save the file. Let's check on what else the linter is finding. Now it's telling you that it's expecting a string for the key statement. Aha! You need to put quotes around the key. Now you should be able to guess what's still wrong. It's just the same errors we had before. No comma and no quotes. But wait, there's still one more error. Remove that extra comma and save. Now you can see our JSON is lint free. To sum up, Linters can help you write better, more readable, and more idiomatic code. Idiomatic means that the code follows the community conventions for a language. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions on Twitter at a r o a c h also follow devnet on twitter at c i s c o d e v n e t to keep up with our latest adventures thanks for watching